All the engines were taken aback by the recent events on Sodor. All were extremely cautious as they took their trains. Henry had joined Gorn and Murdoch and was now waiting to be repaired as well. One afternoon, Percy was on his way to the quarry when he stopped at the sheds. Hello, lazy bones, he said cheekily. The big engines did not like this at all. Are you having fun? Take my advice and get out and do some real work for a change. At last, Henry lost patience. You think you're so funny, don't you? Indeed I do. Well, you're not. You wouldn't be laughing if you were stuck in the shed. Like I'd ever be, said Percy loftily. I never have accidents. Oh, really, snorted Henry. Need I remind you about the time you decided to wear a scarf? Or what about the time you went through the chocolate factory, added Gordon. Then there was the time you crashed into that brake van, and that fruit incident too, and let's not forget the lime, and the time you ran away into that dirt, and who could forget the time you thought you'd try to swim? The big engines laughed and laughed, much to Percy's frustration. Half those accidents weren't even my fault, he cried. That's irrelevant, said Gordon. They still happened. Percy was cross and he left in a huff. He soon arrived at the quarry. Hello, Mavis, he cried. Are these my trucks? Indeed they are, she said. I sent Bill and Ben to go get your brake van, so they should be back soon. Oh, I don't need a brake van, said Percy. The trucks heard this and listened closely. Are you sure? Of course. I haven't had an accident in years. What could go wrong? I have an idea, snickered Scruffy quietly. Percy and Mavis began to arrange the trucks, and when they were finished, Bill and Ben had yet to return. You're set to leave, she said, but I wish you'd wait a little longer. I can manage, thank you, said Percy. I'm not going to have another accident any time soon. We'll see about that, whispered Scruffy to the other trucks. The trucks giggled and began making their plan. Percy started off, and the trucks followed behind. See, Mavis, he called. There's nothing to worry about. Percy was rolling along the line. He soon reached Gordon's hill. This is easy, he puffed. The brake van only slows me down. Then there was trouble. On, 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 cheered the trucks, and banging their buffers, pushed Percy down the hill. Percy was frantic. His driver and fireman applied the brakes, but it didn't help. Percy's brakes weren't strong enough on their own. He did need the brake van. Take the brakes off, he cried. I'll get a flat. His driver did, hoping the hill would stop them, but it didn't. The driver and fireman knew what was coming, so they jumped clear. Percy shut his eyes. What was that? asked Thomas in surprise. Percy just raced off the track, shouted Cranky. What? Are you serious? We have to help him. The dock workers gathered around to see what they could do. The breakdown train won't reach out that far, they said. Then Porter had an idea. What about Cranky? He could lower his hook and fish the trucks out himself. Cranky was cross, but the men liked Porter's plan, so it was arranged. The men all took turns diving into the water to hook Cranky's hook to the trucks. Cranky then would pull them out. There's three, he said as he lowered Rickety to the ground. Actually, that's all, said the dock worker. But Percy had four trucks, explained his driver. Well, that's all that was in the water. But where would it have gone? Ahem, <clears throat> came a voice. The men looked over. Is there a reason why Percy insists on throwing his trucks of stone at me? Found it. Cranky lifted the truck out of Bolstered and lowered it onto the tracks. Then there was trouble. The men had taken Cranky's hook and dove back into the water when they suddenly came up again. Percy's too far down. Cranky's hook won't reach. Oh no, cried Thomas. We can't just leave Percy there. Then Thomas suddenly remembered something. The breakdown train, he cried. It won't reach. No, let me finish. We can put the breakdown train in Bolstrode. Then he can go rescue Percy. The men wasted no time. They put the breakdown train in Bolstrode. What is happening? He demanded. Never you mind, scolded Thomas. Just do as you're told. Bolstrode was cross, but he said nothing. He was soon out at sea rescuing Percy. The men found a raft and had positioned it next to Bolstrode so he could lower Percy onto it. The crane slowly lowered its hook into the water. Next thing everyone knew, Percy had been craned out of the water. He was very unhappy. 
Bolstrode took him back to the dockside, where Cranky lifted him onto the rails. Are you all right? asked Thomas cautiously. I'm f fine, shivered Percy. Thomas felt sorry for Percy and shunted him back to the shed. The other engines felt sorry for Percy too, but not for long. They soon heard he had left without a brake van, and they weren't sorry anymore. They thought he deserved it.